Hello everyone, and welcome to this demo video of the GNOLAND ecosystem. It's supposed to show you what GNOLAND is all about, how it works, and how you can jump in today and start using it. But before we really jump into the example code, I'd like to just go over some basics about GNOLAND. So, what is GNOLAND? GNOLAND is really a layer one smart contract platform that aims to address key issues in the blockchain space, but mainly focuses on smart contract development and making it as easy as possible for new Web3 developers to contribute to the blockchain space with their own experience and ideas. It does this using an interpretive version of Go called GNOLANG, or GNO for short. And if you're familiar with Go, then you can really get started right away with GNO. There is no learning curve you really need to overcome. Uh, and this concept of basing GNO, the smart contract language of GNOLAND, on a powerful language like Go, makes it uh, really accessible for developers that maybe know Go, but don't know a domain-specific language like Solidity or Viper. Additionally, uh, GNO is not limited by VM design like Solidity, and with GNO, you can actually get all of the superpowers of Go, like composability, modularity, and concurrency, but also blockchain-specific support in the form of vetted libraries and modules that you can actually use. There are two concepts that come up a lot and are central to how GNOLAND works, and it's this idea of realms and packages. In simple terms, a realm is just a smart contract on GNOLAND that's written in GNO. What's important to remember here is that realms hold some kind of application state, meaning they're stateful. You can import realms using the GNOLAND slash R syntax in your .gnl files. And there's also this concept of a render method for realms that we'll get into later, but all you need to know about it right now is that it's a way for realms to publicly expose their internal state however they see fit. Packages, on the other hand, are just bundles of functionality like libraries. In contrast to realms, they do not hold any state. Uh, they're imported using the GNOLAND slash P syntax. And a really important aspect of packages is that they can be imported and used by other realms and packages uh, within the ecosystem. Okay. So now that we've got that little recap out of the way, we can look into what we're actually going to be building today. The idea behind today's example is to build an online marketplace for GNOMES. Here, we're going to implement the bare minimum functionality. So we want the store owners to be able to add new GNOMES for sale. We also want users to be able to see all the GNOMES, their prices and their descriptions. And obviously, we also want the users to be able to actually buy a GNOME using the native network currency. But before we dive into the code, I'd like to just give a brief overview of how we're going to divide up the functionality between this concept of realms and packages uh, that I've mentioned previously. In our example, uh, we want to create a package that will hold generic store functionality like buy verifiers and some helpers. The idea is to make this package reusable by other stores that don't necessarily have to sell gnomes. A realm that we're going to be building is going to really be the bulk of this application. It's going to contain our custom GNOME store logic for managing the GNOME inventory and user orders. Okay, so with that said, we can jump in and start coding this up. Okay, now we can actually jump in and start coding this up. Uh, just to give you a brief overview of my environment, I have Visual Studio Code open. Um, it's directed in, in an empty folder called demo. Um, here I have a couple of terminals open that will come in handy later. Uh, the first thing we got to do is actually clone the Git repo. So if we go to the official GNO uh, GitHub page, and we can copy the Git link, come into our terminal and go git clone. Once we have the repo cloned, we can CD into it. And we got to install a couple of tools first. Uh, the first command that we got to run is called make build. What make build is going to do is it's going to install, um, basically build these commands uh, that we're going to use. So uh, no key, uh, no key, uh, no TX export, uh, no land, um, et cetera. Um, these will come in handy later, uh, and we're going to go over them um, in a second. So now if we go back to Visual Studio Code, we have a GNO repo here um, that uh, that's, that's basically been cloned. Um, and we want to create our own uh, package and our own realm. So the way we do this is there is this subfolder within GNO that's called examples. Um, and examples has um, within the subfolder structure two folders that are called P and R. A P stands for packages and R stands for realms. Um, the first thing that we're going to be building is the actual package. So if we open P, there is a subfolder called demo. And within demo, we're going to create our own package. So we're going to go ahead and create a new folder here that's called uh, store. 
within the store folder, uh, we want to create a new file and we want to call it item dot, uh, no. And notice that Visual Studio Code does not uh, recognize this file. It opens it as a, as a regular plain text file. Uh, we want to actually set this to be a Go file, uh, a, a Go syntax file, uh, so we can we can get like syntax highlighting. Um, but as I mentioned previously, this package that we're going to be building is only going to contain some generic functionality that any kind of store is going to use. Um, specifically, this item that no is only going to contain a definition of a store item. It's not going to contain any state. So for the sake of speed, I've uh, copied this, uh, this code over, uh, you can write it up. Um, what we're defining in this item.gno is a specific type, uh, a specific structure that's called item, which has an ID, it has a price and a description. So these uh, primitive types, uh, it has a method for creating a new item using the, the, the parameters that I've just mentioned. And it also has a couple of getter methods. So a method for grabbing the ID, for grabbing the price, for grabbing the description, uh, and this helper method for grabbing basically a concatenation of all of these different, different pieces of information. Uh, so item.no only contains a structure that's called item. So we only define a simple type. There is no state that's being held in this package. It only defines a simple type that we can use. Um, now that we define the type, we can also define a simple test. So if we create a new file, it's called item test uh, .gno, and set this uh, to be recognized as a Go file, uh, we can write a simple test here. And the test that we're going to write is going to be test new item, which simply creates a new item and makes sure that um, what, what uh, the getter method return is actually what we specified when creating it. Um, Cool. So once we created uh, a test file that's called .gno, we have an item.gno. Uh, I just want to go over one thing here, and this is the import section. Notice that this is created within the package store, and it imports something that does not look like a regular Go package. Uh, this is because this package here is actually a GNO file in and of itself. So if we open up uh, GNOLAND examples and we go down to UFMT, uh, this is the actual uh, package that it's importing, and notice that this is also a, a GNO file. And once this file is going to is eventually parsed and precompiled, these imports are going to get sorted out, and also this package is going to be is going to be precompiled as well and interpreted. Uh, so uh, within this within this context, we can we can definitely do this kind of import. Uh, this and the same goes for these test files that we're creating. We can import any kind of GNO file or GNO package. Uh, and it's going to show up here and it's going to be basically like a regular Go import. Um, and notice that the syntax that we have for these no files is in no way different from Go. So the same tools that we use for Go um, in terms of syntax highlighting error, um, import errors, and um, just regular error reporting, we can use it for, for Gno as well. Okay, so now that we have um, an item.no, so a type, and we have a test um, for for verifying that the new item is created correctly. How do we actually uh, how do we actually run this test, and how do we actually make sure that the file that we just written down is actually correct? Um, well, we can use uh, a tool that I'm going to tell you about in one second. Okay, now that we have some no code written down, how can we actually verify it and test it? Well, it turns out we can use a handy tool called GnoDev that makes it really easy to develop GNO packages in Realms. It gives us the ability to pre-compile GNO files to go, to execute tests, and to actually build the packages. Now, this is great because we can use it as we're writing GNO code to see, for example, if our tests are failing, or we have a syntax error or an invalid import. Okay, so to actually use GNODEV, uh, what we need to do is we need to go into our root repository and we can run the command that's called make install gnodev. What this is going to do is it's going to install the gnodev command. Um, we can verify that it's installed by running it with help. Uh, and it's going to give us um, all the functionality that it currently has. So it's it's a small uh, it's a small subset of functionality, but it's going to grow uh, grow as, as the project progresses, of course. Uh, so it gives us these handy options of actually building a package of uh, precompiling .no to go and running and actually testing a package. So I want to show you how uh, how you can use uh, precompile to 
um, to verify that the, the actual .no file that you've created is valid, that it has valid syntax, that it has um, valid imports. Uh, so what we can do is we can run no dev precompile and uh, the only argument that it takes in is the actual uh, is the actual no file that we want to precompile. So it's located in uh, examples, no land, p, demo, uh, store, and I'm going to go and give it item.gno. And once I precompile it, I can actually see that a go file has been generated. Um, and notice that the imports have also been uh, have also been resolved. If we actually look into uh, the UFMT package that's been imported, we can see that the that a go file has also been generated here. Okay, um, I want to do one more thing. I want to uh, test this out. So, how do I actually uh, run uh, run this test and verify that this test actually passes? Uh, I can run a no dev uh, test. I can give it um, the examples p demo uh, store, and uh, I don't need to give it a specific uh, pack a specific file name. I can only give it. Uh, I can give it the, the location of the actual package and when I run go test, uh, I want to run it with uh, the verbose flag. So I want to see what tests are actually being executed. And I can see that uh, my test uh, test new item has been run ran um, and it has uh, and it finished in one, uh, 2.01 uh, seconds. So this file has been actually precompiled and ran and uh, it's it's been verified that this test actually passes. Okay, now that we have a package written down that we can use, and it's uh, a generic a generic functionality that we can import for any kind of custom store that we're building, we want to create a specific store that only sells gnomes. Um, and to do this, we want to create a realm. Uh, so if we open up examples no land bar, um, there is a folder called demo. And within this folder, we can create a subfolder that's called store. Um, and within this store, um, we can create a new file uh, that's called a store.no. Given uh, syntax highlighting. Um, and within this store.no, uh, this is where we sort of want to write our realm. So this is what's actually going to contain our manipulation logic for adding new gnomes, selling gnomes, keeping track of um, whether or not um, items are, are correctly added or stored. Um, and I'm going to copy the, the actual contract implementation here, and I'm just going to go over it with you. So uh, this is this is all there is to it to our realm. Uh, it's located in the package store. It imports some of these types that we're going to be using. Notice that it also imports uh, no packages. Uh, it defines some error messages that, that we use for the, throughout the code. And notice that it also defines some global variables that are uh, very that are specific to this realm, and they're persistent throughout execution. Um, it defines a store admin. So this is currently a, uh, a question mark because we want to modify this later. It specifies um, a list of items that we can use and it specifies a global ID counter just to keep track of like what is the next ID when we add new items. It has a helper method for checking if somebody is a store owner. This render method is going to be discussed in one second. Um, there are also helper methods for grabbing getting an item by the, by the ID. Um, and these two methods are actually the bulk of our realm. So add gnome and uh, by gnome. Add gnome is for adding a new item to the store. So this is a method that can only be executed by the store admin. So once the store admin calls this method, he, he specifies the price and the description. And um, we do like a sanity check where we check if the store admin is actually the one who is calling this method. And if it is, we can uh, create a new instance of the item and we can add it to our list and we can just increase the global ID counter, right? And return some kind of success message. I just want to point out one thing that this item here, it's a store dot new item object, new item function. So uh, this is actually uh, something that we defined right here. So this is so this is actually this method that's being called that, that in our store package um, that, we, that we've previously written down. So this is the code that's being executed right here. Uh, by gnome does sort of the analog thing except for, for selling. So it executes a buy order. Uh, what it does is somebody who wants to buy this gnome, 
uh, or item, they specify the ID that they want to that they want to uh, actually buy. We check if this gnome actually exists. If it does, we uh, create this account amount. Um, we calculate the amount. We uh, create a reference to the banker. Um, we grab whoever is the address of the actual buyer. Uh, and what we do is we ma basically make sure that, okay, this buyer has uh, a, a, a sufficient amount of native currency to actually execute this buy order. And what we do is uh, we send the coins. So we send the, the native currency to the store admin uh, for, for this amount. And we uh, spit out an error message that says, uh, that's a successful error message that, that uh, some known with an ID uh, has been has been purchased. Um, and yeah, this is this is sort of the bulk of of buy gnome. Uh, so again, uh, find a gnome, uh, create the amount, do this um, uh, native currency transfer logic, and just spit out an error message. Spit out a sorry a, a success message. Now that we have an actual realm written up, how do we interact with it? How do we use it? Well, in order for us to actually use the smart contract, we need to publish it to GnoLand. Also, for publishing purposes and generally for usability purposes, we need to have a GnoLand address that we can use. To use an address, uh, we need to have a private key that's associated with it. Luckily, GnoLand has us covered uh, with a command that's called GnoKey. GnoKey allows us to manage our private keys by making sure we can generate new ones, import and export them, and use them to interact with transactions. The other part of this interaction equation is the actual blockchain node that needs to be running. Uh, this can be a public testnet or something that we spin up locally. To locally spin up a node, we can run the GNOLAND command, which just starts the chain that's powered by Tendermint 2. This way, we've checked both of our boxes of having a running client and of having an account that we can use to interact with the chain itself and with the realm that we're going to publish. So to actually interact with this realm and deploy it and deploy the package as well, we need a couple of things set up. Uh, the main thing being is we need a running node in the background. And the other thing is we need an actual account that we can use. Um, so to generate the accounts, we can use a tool that's called Gnoki. Uh, and to use Gnoki, uh, we can look into our uh, build folder and we can find, find, find it there. Um, it offers uh, the functionality that we need for manipulating uh, our private keys, generating new private keys, exporting them and stuff like that. Um, we're gonna need to create two keys. One key is gonna be for the seller. So whoever is actually the owner of this store, uh, the store admin, um, who is gonna be managing this, uh, this realm and is gonna be getting the proceeds from every sale. And we wanna uh, create a, an account for the user. So uh, we wanna simulate a user actually buying a gnome from this store. Uh, so to do that, what we can do uh, is we can run a no key uh, generate, no key generate, uh, it generates a BIP39 mnemonic that we can use to actually derive the private key. Uh, so we're going to generate two mnemonics for two keys, and to actually add to actually add the key, we can run a GNO key add, uh, give it a key name. So we want to create, for example, a seller key, um, and we want to specify the recover flag. The re the recover flag, what it what it's going to do is it's going to force GNO key to ask us to provide it a mnemonic that it can use to recover the, the private key. So uh, it's asking us for a passphrase uh, to actually encrypt the key on this. So we give it a simple passphrase, for example, and it's asking us for our actual mnemonic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the mnemonic that we generated. And now we actually generated the, the key. Um, if we wanna see, um, if we wanna see a list of all the keys that we have, we can run no key list. It is gonna give us, um, an active list of keys that are currently in the key base. Uh, so we repeat the same process for the actual user key. So user key, we're going to use this mnemonic, uh, just copy it. Um, asking us for a passphrase, we repeat the passphrase. We give it the second mnemonic uh, that we generated. And it's going to give us um, a confirmation that we now have two keys, one for the seller and one for uh, for the actual user. Okay, so now that we've actually generated our accounts, uh, for the one for the seller and one for the user, uh, these accounts need funds to interact with the Realm and to do the package deployment and to do the Realm deployment. And there are two ways we can uh, get funds. Um, 
one way is sort of quicker if you haven't still started the chain yet. Uh, and this is modifying a file that's called Genesis Balances. Um, this is a no Noland Genesis Genesis Balances. What this file is, is it's simply a spreadsheet of all the addresses that need to get topped off uh, as soon as like the Genesis block is being created for the chain. Um, so what we're going to do is we can prepend our own two uh, key addresses uh, that we're going to use for this example. Um, there is a better way to actually do this is if you go in no command, no faucet, there is a readme here that you can follow to deploy your own faucet and um, basically get funds for any kind of address on a running chain if you didn't do this Genesis balances check. Uh, this, balance, uh, this Genesis balances modification before you started the chain, right? Uh, but for our example, it's fine to actually modify the Genesis uh, the Genesis balances um, to give our accounts um, the, the funds that they need to do to do this interaction. Okay, now that we've uh, created a, an entry into our Genesis file, Genesis balances file, we can actually run the node uh, and build out the initial state. So uh, the command that we're going to run is uh, no end, which, which is in uh, the build folder. So once we run the node, it's going to load up that initial state. Um, and now we can actually start interacting with the packages and realms live, uh, live on the node. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I sort of want to verify that uh, the user account that I specify within the Genesis balances actually has balance to interact with with a realm or even deploy a package. Uh, and the way I can do this is I can run a command uh, for on GNOME key that's called query, and I specify auth accounts and I specify the address of the account uh, for which I want to check the balance for and I specify uh, the location of the node that's running. Um, in my case, I'm running this node locally, and this that's why this is localhost, but this can also be an address of the testnet um, that's currently open. Uh, and if I run this command, I can actually see that this address, which is the seller account, has some kind of initial balance that I can use. Okay, um, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna actually deploy the package. So, the package that we're going to be deploying is within p demo store so this uh, item type um, the way we do that is we run this command uh, it's called make transaction add package we specify the key that we want to use we specify the package path so notice it's no land uh no the land slash p slash demo slash store and we specify the on disk package directory um, we specify the deposit amount the gas fee uh gas wanted parameters uh, we want to broadcast this transaction. Uh, we set the chain ID, uh, which is dev in this case. Uh, for testnet, this is going to be different. And we, we specify the URL of the node that's running. Again, this is the local node. Uh, this can be a testnet node if, if, you're, if you're running this against the testnet. Um, so we run this command. We enter the password to sign the transaction and broadcast it. And now uh, this package has actually been deployed. Um, we want to move over and actually do the realm deployment. But before we deploy the realm, there is one thing that we got to do. And that's, um, if you remember, if you go into our realm, our store admin, uh, address is still not set. So we want to set it to the address of our, uh, our actual, uh, seller key. So the, the address that's associated with seller key. Um, it is, is the address that can manipulate this realm and they can add like new gnomes to the store and modify it, its internal state. Okay. So now that we've uh, set the address, we can actually deploy the realm. So we deploy the realm pretty much in the same way as we deploy a package. The only difference being we specify that it's uh, a realm and not a package that we're going to be deploying. Um, we enter the password to sign the transaction and the realm has now been deployed and it's live. Um, and now, now that we have a realm and a package uh, up, we can actually start interacting with a package. And the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna call this method add gnome, which adds new gnomes to the store. And remember this, um, this method can only be called by the store admin. So the user key cannot, cannot actually call this, but uh, uh, the, the, the address that's associated with seller key can. Uh, so I'm going to add some initial dummy data. Um, how does this call look? So I'm uh, doing no key make transaction call using the seller key. I'm specifying the, the realm path. I'm specifying which function I want to call. So I want to call add gnome and I'm specifying the argument. So I want to set 
a price of a thousand. Uh, the description is going to be no one and the other parameters have already been mentioned. So like these default parameters, they're fine for these uh, test transactions. Once I hit this, I have successfully added a GNOME uh, and I'm going to do this uh, two more times just so we have a few gnomes present in the store. Sorry, that was the wrong password. Okay, cool. Now that we have a store filled up, how can we actually view this state? You can view it from the clean, or you can uh, view it sort of more interactively uh, using uh, a website. So uh, no one offers you uh, offers you a website server that you can run using uh, within the build folder. So if you run uh, build website, the, the website command is going to open up a website uh, on your local port. And basically what, what it shows here is uh, some examples of realms and packages, uh, but we can use actually this, we can use the site to actually view our internal realm state. So uh, remember that we deployed our realm on uh, node.land slash r slash demo slash store. And if we uh, append this to, to our website URL, we can actually see uh, the three items that we just added. And you may be wondering, okay, well, how is this being rendered? But if you go back, we have this method that's called render. And this render method is what's actually being, what's actually displaying the item. So if the path is the home path, so, so this path, uh, it's going to just go over and iterate all of the items that it currently has in the store. And it's going to show them to the user in, in Markdown, of course. Um, so this is how users can actually see. Uh, if you want to look at, uh, for example, a specific item, they can do colon item slash and then put in the ID of the item. This is something we've also specified here within the render method of the code. And for example, I want to see the item with uh, ID uh, zero and it gives me GNOME one. And if we put down, for, uh, for example, an ID that doesn't exist, it says uh, GNOME not found. There is one more functionality that we need to cover, and this is actually buying uh, a GNOME. So the way we do this is we execute a, a call towards buy GNOME, but notice that we execute it from a user key. So this is a completely different account from the seller key. Um, we want to call the method buy GNOME on the Realm demo store. We specify the argument of the GNOME we want. So we want the GNOME, uh, GNOME 1, or in this case, GNOME 2, sorry, because it starts at zero. Um, we run this command and we can see that GNOME with ID 1 has been successfully purchased. Um, and if we check, and if we check the balance of the seller account, we can see that it's actually been increased uh, by the price of this GNOME. That's been it for this demo. We hope you've liked it and found it interesting. If you'd like to learn more about GNOLAND and GNO, you can check out these links on the screen. We are very active on GitHub and Discord, so you won't really get bored. Uh, we are also actively looking for new contributors who can share their experience and thoughts on how we can make GNOLAND better. Speaking of contributors, I'd also like to take a second to let you know about an upcoming event that's happening in the GNOLAND space. It's called Game of Realms, and it's basically a developer competition where Participants are challenged to build smart contracts and tooling for GNOLANG along with any kind of documentation and guides. Um, it's just about making GNOLANG better and more secure by having developers come in and give their input uh, and ultimately be rewarded for it. Uh, if this sounds interesting to you, you can learn more about Game of Realms on our official Discord. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more GNO content.